And we welcome in the head coach of the Derry Area Trojans, Mike Arone, to our playoff edition of Westmoreland on the Gridiron. Coach, good to see you. Congratulations on your playoffs. Uh, you know, the victory last week as well. And the fact that you went from an 0-10 season to a 5-5 and season and now have qualified for the tournament. Man, that's tremendous. Congratulations to you. Thank you, Flick. Thanks for having me. Um, yeah, we're excited as, as a whole. Our coaching staff, our kids, we're all excited, uh, you know, to get a good week of preparation in and, um, you know, have a, have a put our best foot forward Friday night. Mike, you have preached program building since the day you took the job and how it's not going to happen with a snap of a finger. Or, you know, it takes a lot of hard work and uh, certainly to rebuild it. When you look at the teams you played this year, they were the same teams you played a year ago and you're five games better. That has to make you pretty darn proud of your team. Yeah, I, um, it, that's, that's again, it's a step in the right direction. It's the direction we want to be heading. Uh, we know there's a whole lot of work left, um, but I credit my coaching staff. Those guys are phenomenal. Um, I credit our kids because, um, you know, they've bought in and they put the work in every day. So, um, yeah, we're excited about where we could be heading, but we also know there's a lot of work left and, and we're excited about getting that work done. And as coaches, and I know you have an experienced staff, you want the kids to buy into what you're selling. And that's what it seems like it's been happening this season. I mean, you go back to game one, you're playing a very good Latrobe team. They took it to you. And then little by little, you could see some confidence uh, growing. Even in the losses there, you know, when you when you played some of the you know topper echelon teams in 2A, you could see the kids having that confidence and, you know, getting better each and every week. And that's just kind of seemed to be what you guys were looking for as a staff. Yeah, it, it is. And, and, you know, routine and, and, and practice habits and things like that that are really cr cliched, but you preach them because it's true. Fundamentals and routine got to become part of your, part of your plan. And, and that's what we do every day in practice. And our kids understand that. And man, do they, do they, do, do they goof around at times? Absolutely. They're kids, but also having fun is part of it, but they know when it's time to work and when it's time to be serious. And, and our coaches, you know, we all get along really well. I think that's another important thing as a staff. Um, we enjoy each other's company. Uh, we have a good time together. And same thing, when it's time to get to work, we get to work and we work together really well. So, yeah, um, you know, the, the next step, I think, would will be to make sure our kids understand moving forward that, we're there to be competitive in every single game. It doesn't matter what echelon of team we're playing or or where that team is ranked or what their record is. Our our goal is to is is to win every game we play. Of your five victories, arguably your most significant one came against Burl a couple of weeks ago. A game on the road, a game that was their senior night, a chance for them to solidify themselves into the playoffs. But it didn't turn out that way. It was you that pulled off the road win. Did that really have the kids then believing that, hey, you know, we can not only get to the playoffs, but we can compete to win in the playoffs? I mean, I hope so. Uh, you know, sometimes they're a fickle group. Sometimes they're hard to read a little bit emotionally. Like, you know, they're they're not there's not a whole lot of uh, raw, raw guys on our team. There really isn't. There's a couple. But yeah, I, I, I sure hope so, because like, we've planted that message in their heads. And, and again, we challenged them that before that Burrow game that we want to take care of business tonight. And they did. They stepped up and took care of business. So we're hoping moving forward, uh, we're going to keep sending that message and that they just believe in themselves and each other. You were finally able to have a healthy Ahmad Ward all season long. 1,200 yards on the ground, 19 touchdowns, six interceptions on defense. I mean, he did a little bit of everything. But one thing that stuck out to me is what we've talked all season long and what you've mentioned is his leadership that has really helped the team evolve this season and what he's been able to do from that standpoint as well. Yeah, I would agree. He's a very quiet leader. He's a really – and you wouldn't know this if you know Ahmad's personality like outside of football and within the school and stuff. <laughs> I'm going to say this, and some people aren't going to believe me, but he's a very quiet leader on the football field. He really is. Um, he just goes about his business, and, and other people follow him. I, we've actually tried to get him to be a little more of a vocal leader on Friday nights, and that's just not him. Um, he just leads by his play, but he has been. He's he's um, 
he does everything we ask of him on the football field and and more and um so you know we're real proud of him and and in the way he has grown into a leader so uh, we're looking for for a few more games of that it's also nice to see the fruits of your middle school labor you know showing up already this year you know you have a few freshmen who really have had outstanding seasons, especially on the defensive side of the ball. So that not only bodes well now, but also in the future. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, we've been, I've been talking about those guys, at least trying to all year. And it's not often that, you know, you have four freshmen starting on defense and, and you can be as successful as we are. Those guys have really brought it. Um, Brady Brown is kind of the emotional leader of our team. He really is. Um, just plays that inside linebacker spot very, very well. Aiden Piper up on the line. Mason Horwath stepped in at free safety. Um, and again, I've I've talked about this kid. Max Doherty plays a very difficult position at outside backer, and he kind of plays it to a T. He plays it technically the way, like it's like he's been playing it at the varsity level for three or four years now. He just he's very coachable, and man, he's he's just really solidified that spot for us. So we're excited about about you know where we're heading in the future with with our young guys and and hopefully there's more coming up to to add to our mix now you reach uncharted territory for most of your team i mean you've been involved in it you were involved in it as an assistant at homer center some of your assistant coaches have been involved in it but for dairy area the first playoff appearance since 2019 so really other than a mod who saw a little bit of action as a freshman how do you and your staff help them understand what to expect going to McGuffey on Friday night? I mean, I think the best thing we can do is <clears throat> help them to understand it's just another game. Like it really is. Once the game starts, because most of the pomp and circumstance, if you have, if you will, and um, is is pregame and leading up to it, stuff like that. But once the game starts, it's just another football game. Um, you know, some people say it's faster. It's, I don't really think it is just because it's a playoff game. It's another high, high school football game. So we have to make sure our kids enjoy the experience leading up to it. But when, you know, seven o'clock rolls around and the ball's kicked off, it's just it's time to play football. And, and that's how we have to look at it. McGuffey is certainly not a short trip down Interstate 70, but it, it's a trip that Derry has taken before. In fact, back in 1993, you remember where you were back then, right? You were playing football. Yeah. <laughs> Correct. I was. You, you were at Homer Center at that time, and McGuffey and Derry hooked up in a playoff game that season. The Trojans lost it 19-6. to I still remember that uh, like it was yesterday, uh, really, and that was a long time ago. But at that time, you were playing at Homer Center, and there was a coach for a team that played in your conference from Purchase Line, and his name was Ed Dalton. And he is now the head coach and longtime head coach of the team you're playing this weekend, McGuffey. So isn't that crazy? I mean, small world, just to say the least. Absolutely. I agree. I was about to say the same thing. Small world. So um, I don't know Coach Dalton personally really well. Again, I was a young high school kid. He was a he was a high school football coach. I know the reputation of Coach Dalton. Um, one of my college roommates actually played for Coach Dalton at Mount Pleasant. So, um, you know, I, we know what he's about. Uh, he's a he's a very experienced. Like, so you're talking back to the late 80s, early 90s, like he almost has 40 years of experience as a coach. So uh, they're going to be ready to play. We know that, but um, we respect him, and and uh, we're hoping again just to to go down and put our best foot forward. One thing I noticed in the matchups in the past between the two teams very similar. You know, small, you know, f farmlands, tough kids, and you know, lo very physical, Mike. Yeah, <clears throat> you know, you can see that on film. They're going to bring it. Um, they're very aggressive. Uh, you know, they're they're going to come at you. They have some good runners. Um, you know, you get that wedge blocking and that flex bone sometimes, and it looks like they're just pushing the pile, you know, 14 yards down the field. So we have to we have to be ready to buckle our chin straps and and dig down in and 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 come at them. You're pretty healthy again, and seems like you're ready to go from that standpoint. Yeah, we are. Um, no major injuries to speak of. This may be the healthiest we've been all year um, going in. We we want to keep it that way. Uh, so you know, practice is. We're going to hit as much as we need to. Um, but, you know, at this point in the season, it's it's more of you know, keeping our legs um, ready to go and, and and not beating up on ourselves and just making sure we're prepared uh, scheme-wise. Well, buddy, we've enjoyed covering you all year. And I know in the school, you know, the intensity has picked up because football is doing well again. And then that's a tribute to all of you and not just what happens in the season, but what happens 
in the off season and all that hard work you have to put in to get to that point. And we're starting to build here and it's exciting because the community and the school district and everybody within the school, the student body gets to see a playoff game this year. So that's pretty cool. So again, congratulations, Mike. And thanks for uh, taking your time this evening with us. Hey, thanks Flick. And Hey, thank you guys for everything, for all the coverage. Cause it's great. You know, what you do for our kids. Um, not only with these interviews, but every game, it allows the community, if they can't make it to a game, to to watch. Um, heck, it allows the, the community in Homer Center, who I still have a lot of friends with, will tell me, hey, I was able to watch your game last night. So we really appreciate it here, and you guys do do a great job.